Hello, this is Dr. Ahmed. Today our topic will be geriatric syndromes. I'll start my talk with a case study. It's a common type of patient that we deal with often. This is a patient who has a Parkinson's for a while and he walks with a walker for some time now the family is aware that he had multiple faults. That's the reason he came to my office today to see what we can do about it. We do our usual stuff like uh, checking the vitals. Then we check the blood pressure sitting and standing. And we found that he had significant drop of blood pressure when he stands up. When he does it, he also felt dizzy and feels that he's going to fall. So he was diagnosed with Scheidegger syndrome. It is autonomic dysfunction. Nowadays we have changed the name to something else we call multiple uh, system atrophy. Syndrome is not one disease. As the word means, uh, it came from the Greek word and uh, sin means together and dromos means running. It means running together. For example, sundown syndrome. We see that often at geriatric patient in the evenings they get agitated, more confused, try to get out of the house and it's a problem. It's not a disease by itself, it comes with dementia. So it can have multiple association and we lump it together and call them a syndrome. When we talk about geriatric syndrome, it is usually a combination of, of many issues like dementia, delirium, incontinence of urine, depression, difficulty with speech or difficulty with uh, swallowing, coronary artery disease and silent MI, pressure ulcer, polypharmacy and its side effects and so on. Symptoms like falls and uh, hearing loss and frailty is also included in this geriatric syndrome. So multiple conditions run together giving like symptom of delirium with urinary infection or any infection like pneumonia, pain from abdominal pain or chest pain from acute MI or psychiatric issues all can give rise to delirium. So it can be very confusing and you have to be careful when we see the patient with delirium. It's not always psychiatric issues. Geriatric syndrome will be an important issue for physicians and nurses in coming days. We have to change our approach how we deal with the patient as they can present with different complaints for the same issues. By some estimate, the population of the United States over age 65 will be doubled between year 2000 and 2030. By that time, the population of the United States will go to 70 million people over age 65. 82% of all people will have some chronic disease like diabetes, hypertension, stroke, congestive heart failure, etc. and many more. So it will be a challenging issue to deal with. Other than acute illness at hand, I will talk about some 
uh, assessment tool that we can use for adults and older adults. One of them is SPICE, S-P-I-C-E-S, -E it's a mnemonic. In medicine we use a lot of mnemonics because you have to remember so many things. S stands for sleep disturbance, P stands for problem with eating or feeding, that may be issue, maybe with malnutrition. I is for incontinence of urine or bladder. Then is uh, C for confusion, E for evidence of false. And people will tell you that he had a fall. You can see some laceration injuries. S for skin breakdown. This all points to the priorities that will be very important in coming years. And we should be checking these things when patient comes to us and not talking about these things at all. Sometimes prevention is better than cure. I will be discussing some of the issues that we may face. Suppose someone comes to a physician and tells you that he cannot do things they used to do. That is probably true for a lot of people, even us. When it is a complaint of fatigue, it can be anything. It can be cardiac issues, respiratory issues, it may be sign of aging or it can be frailty syndrome. When I tell that it's a syndrome, it has some part to it. There will be weakness. Sometimes you feel that their hand grip is low. They have trouble going up the steps, etc or when they walk, they're not walking as fast as they used to and they decrease or limit their activities because they cannot do it anymore. In life, function is everything. After hospitalization, there is a significant decline of the function. One third of the people who goes to the hospital and comes out, if they didn't have enough function they will die within a year. So it is a bad statistics. For us it will be putting some initiative to get the patient out of the chair, out of the bed to chair. If they're in the chair, help them to get up, walk to the bathroom with assistance or without, because you'd want to keep them as active as possible while they're in the hospital because that will determine how good they are going to do when they are going home. You have to add physical therapy while at the hospital so make sure that the function is good enough to go home because you don't want them to go home and fall and create a major problem. Because there's some studies that say that people who are severely frail they have a low cholesterol or low albumin. These are the marker for high risk for death in near future. So we have to tackle frailty at all cost and you have to be aware of that. Fall is, is usually a symptom and sometimes it is avoidable because you try to do everything possible to avoid it. Sometimes we trip over small animals, throw rugs. So we have to have some grab bar that you can hold on to. You may need a home safety evaluation to see what else you need, whether you need an extra light in the house. And there are some people uh, specialize on these things and they can suggest what would be good things to do at home. 
If you have a balance issue, get some physical therapy. You may need some walker or cane just to give some support. It is not good to take chances with especially this type of deadly disease. Then is the dizziness. Be evaluated by your primary care physician regarding your blood pressure or inner ear problems. And they also check for your blood pressure to make sure that's not too low. Whether you have some infection or has some confusion issue at night when you get up. These are all things to look into before you do anything about fall risk. After you have a fall, you become very afraid of falling again. So you try to limit yourself to the point that you can become more frail. Social isolation may happen, depression, and make you more debilitated. The saying is, use it or lose it. Although the term was invented for vacation time, if you don't take it, you're going to lose it. In an older person, this is a life and death situation. Next topic is incontinence of urine. It is a very expensive disease. It costs almost $7 billion per year in community. That involves supplies, medications, infection, and things like that. 15 to 30 percent of older person has this problem. We see that all those advertisement in the television, especially in the evening, with newer and newer medications that will help with incontinence. There is two kind. One is urge incontinence, the one that you feel that you have to go. Another is every time you sneeze or cough, you cannot control your urine. So that is a different kind of medication. Most of the advertise you see on the television or newspaper are for the urge incontinence. And those medication helps, but are not perfect. There are some mnemonics for everything in medicine because it's such a big subject. To remember everything is very difficult. There is a mnemonic for incontinence of urine called DRIP, D-R-I-P. D stands for delirium or confusion. R stands for urinary retention. Even prostate issue, stroke, immobility can cause urinary retention. I stands for impaction of stool. Older people get constipation. It can put a pressure on your bladder and cause some of the difficulties. So if somebody has urinary retention, we make sure that they're not having constipation to first with, to explain. Last one is P, is pharmaceuticals. It means a lot of medication has the side effect that can cause uh, urinary retention. You have to rule out those things before you start investigating whether something can be done. For stress in incontinence, commonly we prescribe or advise the Kogol exercises. Is exercise to strengthen the muscle of the pelvis. That can happen to a lot of women if somebody has a lot of childbirth.
next issue may be uh, nutritional issues. It is hard to believe that in the United States people have malnutrition. But actually 16% of people living at home over age 65 has malnutrition and they eat less than 1000 calories a day. In personal care home or in a nursing home it may be, in, it may be even higher because of the many medical issues they suffer from. There is many reasons why somebody will get malnutrition as we get older. There was not enough food or they are not able to cook because of the health issues. Loss of appetite, loss of the taste bud that we have goes down as we get older. So nothing taste good when we are older and a lot of people will attest to that and there's an issue with the denture or dental problem loss of appetite that also happens in older people there is a slowing of gastric emptying there's always a sense of fullness in the stomach or early satiety that also happens Inflammatory disease can decrease your uh, appetite. There is a muscle atrophy, a weakness, and sometimes a lot of medication have a side effect of decreasing the appetite. So you have to go through those medication to make sure that you are not on some medication that causes the problem. And lastly, will be depression. It is more common than we think. Depression may be from many issues. You know, an older person who is stuck in a house, not able to do things, and uh, the issue with the finances, health, and family, all can contribute to depression. So when you assess a patient or reassess a patient, we always ask whether there is any issue with that depression. Most of them they say no, but sometimes they will say yes. And usually they feel very ashamed that they are depressed, as if that's their fault. Insomnia is a common complaint. It is almost universal. 50% of older people complains of difficulty with sleep or not getting enough sleep at night. 50% of the people take some sort of medicine to sleep including melatonin. There are many reasons why people can sleep, especially in elderly person. They also are very sensitive to noise and especially have difficulty sleeping in unfamiliar situation. They tend to nap at, during the day. That daytime sleepiness is not good. You have to find out why. And their circadian rhythm also changes because they produce less melatonin from the brain that helps, helps them to sleep. So what can you do about this sleep? And when you tell them that they have to change the way you sleep or things you do, they don't like that because they want to have a pill to solve this problem. Yes, medication will help, but some sleep hygiene is important for everybody. Don't sleep during the day. Try to exercise during the day. Turn off the TV at night, long before you go to bed. Avoid 
coffee, tea or any stimulant, then you can take some melatonin, not too high a dose, 5 milligrams probably is more than enough. Then there is a uh, prescription medication like Trazodone or Remeron and used occasionally and check for sleep apnea. If somebody is sleeping a lot uh, during the day, a lot of people may not have snoring and also may not be overweight to be uh, suffering from sleep apnea. In summary, when elderly person comes with a problem, that usually the tip of iceberg. So we have to be investigative and keep an eye open to find out the layer of issues before you can find the real problem. And when we do that, that is very satisfying. Especially when you have a syndrome, you have to find the other links. And that might explain a lot of his complaints. Just treating one thing may not be enough. We have to uh, connect all the dots to be helpful to the patient. Thank you very much.